日は夜明けを知らぬ君かなわばその一年は旗とせを編む月夜に九つの影を落としまばゆき夜明けを知る君となる What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to talk about Legend Toki. I was pretty blessed to actually pull this unit. I uh, did have to go a little bit deeper than I would have really have liked, but either way, in today's video, we're going to be using this character in the current GARP challenges as of November 2021, which is going to be Revolutionary Army, the Whitebeard Challenge, and also the Worst Generation. Now, Legend Toki is a pretty interesting unit. She is a little bit like she's kind of like putting in a way where she's kind of like a unit you're kind of like planning for like a future stage for example she's really interesting and she's the type of unit that you really have to be careful with um if you think you can just run this character as captain and destroy all content like it's it's not that simple it's not like a goldie roger or a versus a kainu it's not like full unga bunga damage this unit is very meticulous and you really have to plan according to what the content is going to be and ensuring that you know what's coming up so you know how to prepare for it. So with Toki's special ability, for those of you who don't know, well, this is the special animation of the character, what happens is, is upon the activation of the special, you can target two characters on your crew. For those two turns that those two characters are targeted, those characters are unaffected by essentially everything. It's a pretty powerful effect that this character gets access to. So just anything, right? Like paralysis, bind, special reverse, blow away, special bind, like essentially any debuff that targets those two characters, they are immune to it. However, it lasts for two turns. After the two turns have expired, what will happen is, is that those two selected characters will be receiving a 3.5 attack boost and a 3.5 orb boosting special. In this example here, the two middle characters were selected by Toki's special ability, and because one turn expires upon clearing that stage, and also the preemptive counts as another turn, it means that any effects that happen during the preemptive attack, we are going to avoid, meaning that the two characters in our middle row, Ace and Lucy, were avoiding the blow away for one turn that Ivankov would typically apply on this stage. And now, also because of this, it means that Ace and Lucy on that turn here had a 3.5 attack and orb boost. And you can abuse this in a lot of different ways, as you guys will see further on in this content. I typically like uh, the worst generation challenge, and that's going to be a really interesting clip. I cannot wait to show you guys how that clip actually goes. Um, so that's really cool that this character gets access to that. And I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, but only two characters on your crew get a boost. You do have to remember, though, it is a 3.5 boost to their attack and orbs. Now, this is very similar to, uh, you know, Super Tight Blackbeard, for example. I keep bringing up that character every time I talk about Toki, because that's a really good way to kind of show you guys or talk about the damage that this character is able to provide. We know that when Super Tight Blackbeard does his damage, you know, he does either a 3 times attack and orb boost or a 4 times attack and orb boost. If you have used Super Tight Blackbeard before, you know how good that is. Now, just think of Super Tight Blackbeard, but you're applying it to two characters on your crew. So, you're having two huge pieces of damage output there. It's pretty incredible what you're able to achieve with this character. Furthermore, if you do have a majority of your crew being strength and you do have type advantage on the stage, you can get even more damage if you're using this character as a captain because of this character's super type special. The super type grants a two times color affinity boost to your strength characters, and it will also go ahead and give herself, that Toki that activated the super type, minus five cooldown to the character special ability. So ensure that you activate the special ability of Toki first before activating that super type special. The super type special is actually active upon activating one special on the on the crew. It literally doesn't matter. Just use one special and it will activate the super type effect. Pretty easy to fulfill that condition. Another really cool thing that Toki gets access to is the fact that this character is not only Toki. This also has Hiyori and it also has Momonosuke, meaning that you get access to some of the really cool support characters that those two characters typically get access to. And it's kind of annoying because Momonosuke and Hiyori don't have that many amazing god tier units. And luckily, this is another character now that can get access to not only Toki supports, Momo supports, but also Hiyori supports, which really helps this character out. This character is also a strength slasher free spirit, which is a very good type and class combination, meaning you are able to use the liberal hind ship, which is arguably one of the best ships in the entire game. But I'll leave you guys with this clip and we'll pick things up once we get to the white bid challenge. Uh, 
Now we can talk about the Whitebeard Challenge. So, you know, the Revolutionary Army Challenge is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead now and talk about the Whitebeard Challenge. For this team, we did need very particular units. Um, one character that is actually insanely good for Legend Toki is the Arena Kawamatsu that came out not too long ago. The reason why he's really good is because Toki doesn't really grant you any beneficial slots, especially if you're running a mono strength team, right? Doesn't really help you out too much. Luckily, you have access to Arena Kawamatsu, which has a damage dealing special, which is really good. Uh, it also locks your orbs, which works very well with the fact that he's a damage dealing special. And he also grants an attack boost turn one, and after two turns have passed, you get a two times orb boost to your slasher and free spirit characters. So as I mentioned, damage dealing special and an orb lock perfect for the support of a Kainu, allowing you to get a full board of strength slots, they're locked for multiple turns, and then you can get multiple turns of differing boosts. So that's really nice that you can actually use a special ability like that. Uh, also, we're using the Dogstorm here on this team, and the main reason for it is, is because we're able to use his special multiple times in order to get around attack down. Uh, well, mainly we only use, use him once. He actually has a really low cooldown. Uh, there really aren't really good, too many good characters you can use under Toki that are strength that allow you to get around the attack down. Um, so, but, you know, this Kawamatsu is one of those units, and we use him a little bit later on in the fight. Now, we also use this random Ichiji. Now, this is like the, reg the regular, like, first Ichiji character that ever released in the game. Very, very odd choice, but he's like the only strength unit that does a chain lock that lasts for more than two turns. And the reason why we want that is because we want a, a special that can last multiple turns so that we can use it on the Jozu stage, and then it means that when we move to the Marker and the Vista stage, we're not inflicted with a negative chain debuff. Um, and it means that when we activate the special ability of Kawamatsu, we're able to remove the paralysis and the attack down and not worry about that chain lock that is going to be inflicted on that stage. So that helps out a lot for this particular fight. And the final character on this team that we're using is none other than Vivi and Rebecca. Of course, we're running a mono strength team and we don't really get too much damage against a quick enemy. So we're able to mitigate some of that by having Vivi and Rebecca, which can switch between a strength character and a dex character, giving us type advantage against those quick characters, namely Jozu, who is quite annoying to take down. We're also using the Vivi Rebecca because they're very good for giving us multiple turns of that chain locking effect, which enables us to do more damage. Plus, it also gives us more end of turn damage, so that helps out, of course. And then the special ability grants a color affinity boost to uh, herself as well, which is actually pretty good. It's a striker and your cerebral characters, just in general, giving a lot more damage output, allowing you to just have enough damage to take down Jozu. It was very, very close. But you can see we use the Toki special here. We're going to have two Tokis ready. We have one on this stage, one on the next stage. Stage. So when we when we move on to the next stage, it's going to go ahead and give us a 3.5 attack and orb boost to our two captains, and then we will also go ahead and use Kawamatsu here to get rid of the debuffs, give us the full board of matching slots via Akainu support, and of course with Kawamatsu we get our orbs locked, so we're going to have a full board of matching slots for this stage and the next stage, and we can use the secondary Toki special to give a attack and orb boost to our own captain as well as to Vivi, and Vivi remember is going to have type advantage versus the final boss Whitebeard so pretty simple actually you know as long as you if you get to like the Jozu stage and you kill him effectively so long as all your Toki effects have been active essentially once you're at this point there is absolutely no way you can lose and we do pretty serious damage output with this team but now that this one is done I'm very very excited to go ahead and show you guys the team versus the worst generation And now we're here finally at the worst generation GARP challenge. Now you can see that we're not using double Toki as our captains for this quest. But that's not the main reason why I wanted to do this. I really wanted to showcase the actual power of the unit and actual pieces of content that you may use Toki for, right? Now remember, 
Uh, a big thing about this quest is the fact that on the final boss stage, your whole bottom row is going to be blown away. However, we're able to kind of mitigate that because of the fact that we have Toki. So Toki can target the character, remember, and that character will be unaffected by anything when you move on to the next stage and deal with the preemptive attacks. Now, luckily, we have uh, Morle on this crew. Morle is really, really nice because he has a crewmate effect that can actually resist blow away in the first place. So as long as we use Toki special on the Kawamatsu on the bottom row, we can use then the other effect on on Bullet. So Bullet will be super effective against all types, and he's going to have a 3.5 attack and an orb boosting effect. He is going to hit ridiculously hard. Another thing as well is that we do have the a couple of very key support units. Once again, we have Kawamatsu for his amazing effect to give us uh, an attack boost turn 1, gives us an orb boost on the following stage, but he also gives us a full board of strength slots via the Akainu support, and then of course we can use the Odin special to change the slots into Wano, so we're going to have a full board of Wano slots, and remember when you got a Wano slot, uh, Odin is going to give you a very, very big attack boost, like a 4.75 times attack boost with a Wano slot to your strength units. It's pretty good. And then we have this random Rumble Ace. He's really nice because he does remove the threshold on the following stage, and he's also an attack booster to your strength and your int characters. And then we also have the support of the brand new Dex Jinbei that was accessible via the recent Treasure Map versus Kaido. That support effect will go ahead and lock the slots of all of your free spirit characters. So, unfortunately, Bullet will not have his orbs locked. However, we are still able to output enough damage to KO every enemy on this stage. We have an orb boost, we have an attack boost, we do use the Odin super type just to get the guaranteed kill. Honestly, looking back at it, we probably didn't even need it. We do a lot of damage on this side here, having so much damage with these 1 0 slots, having the orb boost, having the attack boost. The Blackbeard stage can be a bit problematic, but again, we get the job done. And remember, on the final boss stage, we're going to have Toki's effect active on Kawamatsu, so he won't be blown away. He's going to get a 3.5 attack and orb boost, and Bullet, the big one, is going to have a 3.5 attack and orb boost. Remember, Toki is also going to be switched into the captain spot. That will enable us to use her super type, which gives us a 2 times color affinity boost to our strength units, meaning that Bullet is going to hit like an absolute truck. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of this clip. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video. あなたの弱点じゃない。お願いします。ロジャーですらなしなかった。世界最強の。